I welcome you to this evening's webinar about how to triumph over spiritual tests and trials. I consider that this topic is very important. This is why I chose it. My name is Georgiana Danetz. I am a yoga and a tantra teacher in the branch of our yoga school in Sweden. And I am the founder of the Shakti groups and tantra for women. So I will let you know just shortly how this uh, webinar will uh, be unfolding. In the beginning, I will present for you important aspects regarding strategies that uh, evil entities are um, using in order to test us. We can simply put it like that. I will also go through some aspects regarding demonic doubts that every human being on a spiritual path is confronted with. Then I will also come with some very simple solutions, how we can triumph over all these spiritual tests and trials that we are confronted with. And at the end of this webinar, you will have the chance to ask questions so that we will also have a little bit of a dialogue uh, so that we don't just have me keeping a monologue for one and a half hours. And I will also have a PowerPoint presentation so that you have uh, not only me in the picture, but also the aspects that we talk about. And I hope that in this manner, it will uh, be easier for you to assimilate the information. So now I will share the screen with you so that we can start. So I hope that you are able to see the screen. Then we start with the presentation. And it is... Uh, super simple to say that being a human being has its challenges. We all know that. I also want to say from the beginning that even though the aspects that I will present for you might seem simple, uh, might seem known to you, you should um, still be open and uh, pay a little bit of attention to them because thinking that everything that we go through now, it's simple and already known, is another strategy from these entities to make us disconsidered, uh, not paying attention uh, and uh, just uh, somehow a little bit ignore the importance of these uh, aspects. So that we know from the beginning, they work a little bit like that. So again, being a human being has its challenges, it's very sure to say that. But being a human being on a spiritual path, aspiring for and working on one's own transformation and evolution, means actually, among other things, also becoming a target for various evil, tricky, deviating actions of maleficent entities so that we should never achieve valuable and extraordinary results. And I remember very well our spiritual guide um, using quite often a quote which says like this, that in a monastery there are most demons gathered in order to stop the monks from achieving results. And in the same spirit, we can say that in a spiritual school, most demons are gathered because there is spiritual value and spiritual strength. And their task is to stop us from applying, from achieving results, from transforming ourselves. So we need to know that uh, this is the situation. And the more godly spiritual mysteries are revealed to us, the more desperate the attempts to stop us become. It sounds terrific and maybe even discouraging, 
in reality, it's part of life. We can also think like this. A spiritual school, from a certain point of view, it's like a spiritual, um, it's like a university with exams and tests. So we transform ourselves, we start evolving, we notice that uh, there are some transformations within. And in order to make sure that these transformations are not just temporarily that, we go through some tests. And because we are on a spiritual path, the tests are spiritual. So it is part of life. We need by passing these exams to somehow prove that we are worthy to go on a higher level. And also it's very good to remember from the beginning that all the tests that we are confronted with actually are designed are designed for us to pass them. N not, there is no test that is bigger than our capacity to cope with. There is no test that is meant for us to fail. It is our choice if we fail it. It's not the test meant for us to fail it. So every, even if it sounds terrific uh, that uh, we will be confronted with uh, these evil entities and we will have to go through spiritual tests, it's part of life. It is actually necessary, and I will explain also why, to have these spiritual tests from time to time. In order to triumph over all these inner tests and trials, we simply need to act with firmness, a lot of courage and heroism, in order to defeat the attempts meant to stop us from applying practically the godly truths that we received. I don't know in which year of yoga you are. I'm in the 30. 33rd year of yoga. So you can imagine after 33 years of yoga in which you very well know that we receive one aspect, one technique, one theory every single week. It is a lot of godly truth that we receive. And if we will be tenacious enough and um, ingenious enough to apply practically almost all of them, it will lead to a huge transformation. So the more we receive, the more godly truths that we receive that are there in order to help us transform, discover who we really are and come much closer to God, the more the attempts to stop us will be. So directly proportional with that. But also, in the same time, we develop, I say a little bit like a joke, but from a certain point of view, analogically, it is true. We develop the spiritual muscles, we develop the spiritual strength and the qualities necessary for us to cope with no matter which tests. And also here, I remember very well, uh, I was discussing with our spiritual guides uh, when he was still in uh, Romania, about Shakti groups and the aspects that I was teaching there. And also I came about, uh, I came across a topic and I said I would like to speak with the women in the Shakti groups about uh, crisis. And in that discussion, the spiritual guide told me, uh, Georgiana, because you also, you are not just a yoga teacher and a tantra teacher, you are also the founder of the Shakti groups. You should be able to cope with no matter what type of crisis in a couple of hours. When you hear it, it, it sounds a little bit uh, mission impossible because I hope that you didn't confront yourself with any life crisis. Uh, I have. So I know how tough they can be. But to think that you can cope with it in a matter of a couple of hours, uh, it, it sounds, uh, as I said, almost like mission impossible. But then when I thought, wait a minute, if the spiritual guide says that, it means it is possible. It means that, yes, even if it's a, a tough life crisis, I should be able to pass it, to, to get rid of it in a couple of hours. because. I received so much in this spiritual school. I have all the tools, all the means, all the knowledge necessary. 
we just need to also apply it practically. So we need to remind ourselves on a daily basis, it is quite a healthy habit that we are endowed with free will. Not even God can force us to do what we don't want to do. So that means that nobody can force us to do what we don't want to do. Therefore, when we will be confronted with spiritual tests and trials, it's crucial to remind ourselves, wait a minute, I have a free will. What do I want to do in this situation? And then we choose wisely what we want to do, even if it is a super tough situation, if it is, it makes us, I don't know, cry or feel, feel uh, almost crushed under it. Still, we have free will. We can choose what we want to do in that situation, how we want to feel in that situation, which way out of that situation uh, we want to choose. So basically, we can say like this, it's always up to us what we choose, the godly aspects or the opposite, the godly attributes or the opposite, optimism or the opposite, the divine or the opposite. Nobody can force us to choose. So it's, uh, it's a crucial aspect to keep in mind. So now I will go to some demonic stratagems and tricks that these uh, evil entities are using in order to trick us, stop us, make us go astray, renounce, give up, and so on. So again, even if these stratagems and tricks that I will go through seem known to you or sound simple, they don't have to be complicated. They are there. So when we are aware of them, it will be much easier for us to triumph over them. So these evil entities, they trick us to renounce applying practically the divine truths we receive, even if at the beginning we've had the intention to practice them. And this is one of the most used stratagems by them. So, for example, you receive a super valuable technique, not that one is more valuable than the other. But just for the sake of the discussion, we say it's a super fascinating technique. And we say, yes, from now on, I will practice it every single day because I want to achieve those results. And I know that this will be very good for me and it will solve almost all of my problems. And then we start. And after a, a while, shorter or longer, depending on various conditions, they will start um whispering in our ears all kind of funny reasons why we should not do it anymore i am tired i am hungry now i have to do this it doesn't matter the reasons are, are always uh, actually stupid and this is also an aspect that is good to keep in mind these uh, evil entities or demons they are stupid, they are not intelligent, but demons live for thousands of years. So they have enough time to study human beings and the psychology of human beings so that they know exactly which buttons, so to say, to press, that they will get the results they want. We need to be more intelligent than them. If we are on the same level of intelligence with them, we will be tricked. Or if we are not aware enough, we will be tricked. So this is one of the favorite stratagems of the evil uh, entities or the demons to make us in various ways to renounce applying practically the techniques and the methods that we receive. Another stratagem that they use quite oftenly is to tempt us also in different ways. And they are quite innovative, unfortunately, for us if we fall into their trap. So they tempt us more and more to become sick and tired of applying practically, constantly, the revelations we receive. So 
we never manage, if we give up, we never manage actually to experience the immense godly power in those revelations. It doesn't matter which technique uh, it is about, because even if we will practice, for example, the warming up exercises, it's the first things we learn, the first methods we learn when we start practicing yoga. Even if we will practice only those with the right mental concentration, the right focus and the transfiguration and the aspiration, you will still activate Vishuddha Chakra, Ajna Chakra, Muladhara Chakra. So you'll have a lot of results. But somehow they start implementing in our inferior mind this attitude, this energy of I'm sick and tired of applying this constantly. So, of course, we don't practice. We will never receive, we will never manage to experience the results. And the power, the godly power in every technique that we received in our spiritual school are actually immense. Another trick they use is, okay, you start applying practically, you start practicing the yoga techniques, no matter if it is about physical postures, breathing controls, mental concentration, meditation, no matter what, we start practicing and we are really determined to practice them. So they notice that they cannot do the previous tricks on us to give up on them. Okay, so they come with another trick. Instead, they make us apply them wrong-headedly. So we, instead of applying them correctly, we apply them incorrectly. So after a while of applying incorrectly some techniques, we notice that, wait a minute, uh, it is said here, it's written on the paper, the results are this and this and this and this, and I don't get them. It means the technique doesn't work for me. No, it means that you apply it wrongly. You apply it incorrectly. This is why the, you don't get any results. So this is another stratagem or another trick they use oftenly uh, with us or against us. Another stratagem that they use is to make us become lazier and lazier in deepening the methods and advice we received. And they incite us to do something completely different every time. So they trick us to believe that it's thousands of times more important to do anything else but to practice perseveringly those methods. So I see here some participants raise their hands. I would uh, ask you to put the questions in the question and answer part of the menu so I can answer to you or in the chat. So either or, write please either in the chat or in the question and answers menu. All right, no question popping up. Then I will move on. So as I said, we can take Meanwhile, good, we move on. So another trick that the demons used with us is to deceive us, to stun us and to cause us to never apply properly or fully the divine methods, because when they are vitiating, when they are disturbing the determining cause of those techniques, the natural effects will not longer appear. And so it will seem to us that in vain, whatever we do, we practice and we practice, but we feel that it is in vain, whatever we do. So they cause us giving up practicing. So Again, we need to pay attention that we practice everything we receive as it is written there, as it is taught to us. I can give you a recent example. I don't know if you listen to the message coming from our spiritual guide regarding Mahamudra. 
some people start practicing the Mahamudra steps shorter. So they do all the steps, but instead of doing five minutes as it is written there, they do it shorter. This is also a trick coming from the demons, making us apply them not properly, not fully, and therefore they will not work as they are presented for us that they work. So we need to pay attention also to this aspect because we can practice, but not fully, and then we'll not get the results. So we will start having this doubt that, hmm, I'm practicing, but it seems like I'm doing it in vain. Nothing happens. I'm doing it, I'm doing it and nothing happens for me. It means it doesn't work. No, it means we don't practice it as it fully as it should. Also, another trick that uh, they use with us when we are on a spiritual path is to doubt the revelations that we received more and more until some people start even despising them or mocking them every time somebody reminds them of these revelations. Ah, let me be with uh, blessings. They, they don't work. I, I'm just exaggerating maybe a bit or not. But uh, this is also a trick that um, you, you simply start despising or mocking the revelations you received, uh, especially when somebody comes and say, hello, you should, uh, you, you need to do this if you want to, for example, become more harmonious or get less stressed or whatever it is, the situation. Another favorite trick of them is to make us forget completely the revelations, the initiations, the mantra, the methods we receive forever. So in this respect, because I'm a yoga teacher, from time to time I'm checking with my students uh, if they remember when we sit down to do laya yoga with a certain mantra, I'm asking, do you remember the mantra of this respective cosmic power? And some, some of them forget. This is also because they don't practice, but it's also because when you receive an initiation which is having a huge godly power and value, the demons are there to make you forget about it. They also sometimes make us immerse ourselves in various vain controversies. Uh, inner conflicts make us become preoccupied with various foolish dilemmas, such as, hmm, but how do I know if this method really suits me? Well, practice it, get the results, and then you will see if it suits you or not. I if you start doubting it before you practice it, it's definitely not an angel whispering in your ear to doubt it. Definitely guaranteed. Also, Another trick or stratagem that uh, the demonic entities use is to make us quickly renounce the divine truth and even consider it a great mistake or even a sin. Also, one of the demon's favorite trick is to make us postpone. Postpone later. I will practice later. And... By doing this again and again and again, we will never be able to realize their enormous value and power. So now it's more important to renovate the house. Now it's more important to cook the food. Now it's more everything is more important than practicing these techniques. So, of course, uh, what is motivating for us, or allow me to rephrase it, what is motivating for me, what makes me practice every single day is the results that I obtain. The more results I get, the more of them I want because I feel so good and the, the states are wonderful and I can notice that my health is good and this, uh, the emotions are in harmony, the mind functions well. So of course, what motivates me the most is getting results. Do you think they don't know that? Do you think that the demons don't know what motivates us? They, they know us very well. So they know the uh, human psychology quite well. So when they notice that this is motivating us, they will make us postpone indefinitely 
So, of course, we will not get results. We don't get results. We are not motivated to practice. We are not motivated to practice. We will stop practicing. We stop practicing. You can continue with the logic. So, um, until the end, we will be just uh, a yogi with the name, not a yogi with the state. Then they can also make us fear little by little the more and more the divine truth. Uh, why? The answer is quite easy. The part in us that fears the divine truth is the ego, because the truth will uh, do in such a way, will function in such a way that we will get rid of the ego, and the ego doesn't want to disappear. So whenever we start fearing whatever divine truth uh, we focused upon, this is also a stratagem from the demons, um, of course, putting the ego there uh, as a wall between our spiritual transformation and that divine truth. Another stratagem used by them is to easily fool us, tempting us and constantly causing a state of dissatisfaction, disregard for the revelations we receive. And they even make us uh, say, I don't need this, because now these are my other pressing links. I need more to do this than to practice, to do my daily spiritual practice. In some other cases, they make grow in us precisely those flaws and weaknesses that determine us to never find the necessary time to deepen as needed the received methods. So I put here not by chance to people sitting in front of the TV. This is one of the favorite tricks, spending hours in front of the TV instead of practicing. Also, in the case of those who diligently apply and also deepen the divine revelations, there will be four or five demonic entities who will remain around that person will lurk day and night to awaken in that person, to strengthen in them bad habits, laziness, inconsistency, mischief, the habit of postponing, whatever will make them, in the end, to give up practicing. And um, soon I will also mention another favorite of their tricks uh, that they use oftenly, because none of us uh, live alone. I will mention it soon. For example, they make us suddenly give up putting the divine practice, in, the, the divine truth into practice because they start slipping into our minds the most aberrant motives, the most aberrant reasons. And if we are not firm enough, we will accept them and we will give up practicing. So not a good way to, to live. They can also gradually blind us to the value, to the revelations we received and make us deaf forever to their real meaning and importance. So we will ignore them and we will even behave as if they never existed. And this I also saw it many times. So we receive basically, we received basically everything we need to stay healthy, to feel happy, to evolve on a constant pace, to have states of enlightenment and so on. And then we go to our spiritual guide and ask, I have this problem, what should I do? We already received everything we need in order to fix that issue, but we forgot it. We become blind and deaf to it. So we ignored that we already have them. So we behave as if we, we never received them. Also, these entities can encourage us to choose frivolous, vicious preoccupations. And they will push us constantly so that such flaws become habits. And then they will take over our existence, will suck our life force. And in this way, our life will become almost like a caricature. And I also saw, unfortunately, cases like this, and some of them are quite... Uh, <laughs> prominent and uh, famous cases. There will be always a few who will manage to avoid all these traps. 
and they will come to deepen the received methods. Then the demons will often attack them and persecute them stubbornly through other persons who are selfish, who are uh, vile, who will start mocking them, lying, humiliating them. And I also speak about this from my own experience. So the ones that are nearest to you, they are used by the demons to attack you, almost, sometimes almost on a constant basis. So also pay attention that we are vulnerable. When we are, for example, in a close relationship with somebody, we are open, we are vulnerable in a good way. But this uh, openness, the demons are using it. So if we say no to all these tests, if we do our uh, role, if we play our roles in a conscious manner with diligence and perseverance, they notice, aha, I cannot, I cannot make that person do what I say directly. Okay, let me use this one because I know she or he is open to this person. So they start using the people in your vicinity, the persons who are close to you, to attack you. And sometimes it's ridiculous what the closest, the dearest one is able to do because just they are not aware, they are not um, vigilant enough, they allow themselves to be used by demons. It's really stunning to see what, what with, with what things they come to you just to somehow disturb your inner harmony. So pay attention that this is also a trick which is used quite quite oftenly. So, they are coming with different stratagems. We can choose because we have the free will to fall into the trap or not. So now I will come also with some examples of uh, perfidious demonic traps that are put there for us to fall into them, but we can choose not to. For example, being part of yoga for years, but still not being a vegetarian, not practicing at least 20 minutes of Hatha Yoga per day, not practicing the erotic amorous continence is a demonic trap that we fell into. Also being in yoga for years and still drinking coffee, coffee or smoking, it's uh, obviously a trap in which we felt. Not being able to do Shambhavi Mudra for at least 15 minutes, but in the same time we claim that we meditate for hours, it's also a demonic trap that we fell into. Another trap is being more and more subdued to satisfy the material desires. Even after years of so-called yoga practice, we still observe only the appearances instead of perceiving the true mysterious reality behind them. The illusions are still reality for us, while the spiritual reality is still inaccessible to us. So in our daily life, we need to become a little bit more observant that everything that happens is due to resonance. So no matter what we experience as thoughts, feelings, or states, it triggers a certain resonance with universal reservoirs of energies. Everything that is taking place within and outside of us is based on universal laws. So when we start observing them, even in the most minuscule aspect of our life, it means that we are more open, more aware, more somehow spiritualized. If we still see only the facade of things, the spiritual reality is to a certain degree still inaccessible to us. Another trap that they put there in front of us to fall into is to cease to stop our spiritual practice or a tapas when starting a new amorous relationship. So we forgot about God and uh, get uh, caught into the relationship. Stop practicing yoga or leaving the spiritual path when our lover uh, 
leaves the spiritual path or stop practicing yoga. It's another trap. As we mentioned, knowing about the erotic amorous continents, but not applying it in our relationship because our uh, lover, our man does not want to, it's another trap. Accepting our existence to be guided astray by our immature consciousness by infantilism, which still characterizes us, is another demonic trap. A demonic trap is to force the awakening and ascension of Kundalini Shakti, though it is obvious that still we have some grantees, some nodes still blocked, we still have blockages, but we force the awakening of Kundalini Shakti because of different reasons. And because the reasons are coming from the demons, the reasons are never intelligent. I told you that in the beginning, the demonic entities are stupid, but they know us very well. So they can trick us and play us because they know our psychology very well. Another trap is believing strongly that our current spiritual level is the best. There is nothing that can be added to it in order to accelerate our spiritual progress. We are the most advanced person in the whole, uh, on the whole planet. It's a big demonic trap. So the divine, the godly attribute of godly humbleness is in place here. Not being able for the moment to acknowledge that our ego is the source of the majority of our problems that we are confronted with is another trap. And especially when instead of acknowledging it's my ego who causes me all these problems. So instead of doing that, we point figure, you make me, you do that, you because of you or that one or that one. This is a demonic trap and also quite uh, uh, spiritual immaturity for the moment. Not being grounded, refusing to take into consideration the fact that we have a physical body that requires a harmonious, adequate diet so that we are neither skinny nor obese. It's another demonic trap. Not realizing that in reality, we determine everything. We are responsible for everything due to the fact that we become what we think preponderantly. We become what we love preponderantly. We become what we eat preponderantly. We become what we intend preponderantly. So we can never, ever point the finger in that direction. We can always point the finger into the into our direction. We determine everything. Everything that we experience right now, it's the result of what we thought, loved, ate, intended previously. So there is no other which is respons who is responsible for our current state. So not realizing that, it's another, another demonic trap that we fell into. Another demonic trap that I saw many people uh, who are confront confronted with is that they love other people and sometimes quite a lot, a lot, a lot, but they refuse to different reasons to love themselves. And this is something that we need to take care of every single day, starting from now. We need to love ourselves because also love is uh, a divine, a godly energy that the demons run away from as from torture. So if you want to diminish the number of demonic attacks and the number of demons jumping on you, love as much as you can. The more love you have in your heart, the less demonic energies and entities you will have around. Another demonic trap is to await that our various problems will be solved by God, by angels, by our spiritual guide, without us doing the smallest effort to contribute to their resolving. This is a demonic trap. Nobody can evolve instead of us. Not even God can come and say, uh, my dear, let, let me, I will transform uh, instead of you. Nobody can do that. Only us can do that. So awaiting for somebody to solve our problems and to evolve us, so to say, it's a demonic trap. 
remember postponing that we mentioned in the beginning of this webinar. Another demonic trap is to read a lot spiritual books, but not to make time to practice daily a few asanas, pranayama or laya yoga. It's another demonic trap. Another demonic trap is talking to people we come into contact with, with emphasis from a claimed high spiritual level. Life will shock us and show us that uh, there is a discrepancy between what we want to appear and what we actually are. It will always show us that. Another trap is bragging about the huge spiritual efforts, the supra efforts that we make, instead of being humble and keeping it between us and God. Another demonic trap is consuming our time and energy by doing daily all kinds of astrological calculations to discover what the planets will trigger in our life and so on. So doing this on a daily basis is a demonic trap. We also know the famous quote that the planets and the stars, they, they uh, inclined the resonance, but they cannot determine it. Another demonic trap is to believe that we have to be ascetics in order to progress on the spiritual path. The amorous fusion based on erotic continents, they are highly superior to inaction. So ascetism is not exactly the wisest choice or solution. Another demonic trap is to be excessively critical towards yourself either by emitting accusing, superficial, malicious, critical judges against judgments against yourself, or by being very tough and even ruthless on yourself. This is also a demonic trap. Another trap is identifying ourselves excessively with our mental structure or our emotional structure, without making the necessary efforts to obtain a deep balance between all our five sheets or subtle bodies. Another trap is trying to force through inadequate means the awakening and dynamizing of the chakras. Another trap is believing firmly that our plan is a horrible place, a poison, a prison, and our existence here is just a calvary which implies only suffering. This is another demonic uh, trap. Because if we take a step back, the mere fact that we exist, that we are alive, is a miracle. It's a divine miracle. And we have at our disposal an entire planet with beautiful nature and wonderful people and everything that it is there. So suffering is an option. It's not an it's not a it's not an obligatory, it's optional. Another trap is isolating ourselves from other people, believing that this means attaining the highest level of spirituality. When we isolate ourselves from other people, we don't get the feedback. feedback. By not interacting, we don't have the mirror. We don't have to get confronted with different aspects. So actually, it's not exactly conducing with the highest level of spirituality. It helps, but it's not everything. Another trap is jeopardizing ourselves in helping others more before helping, transforming, revolutionizing ourselves so that we can actually help others efficiently and offer them a living example. Another trap is striving to discover God outside of us instead of making tenacious efforts to discover God within as the essence, as the divine self, as Atman. Another trap is be believing that our states of anger, disharmony, hysteria are justified. There is a reason for it. They are not justified. It's just us tricking ourselves, actually with the help of demons. Another trick or demonic trap we can fall into is considering that it's possible to just cross through our spiritual path quickly, easily, Ignoring the fact that we have some traumas or tensions or shocks, emotional shocks, which generate echoes in our psyche, 
which we need to eliminate, which we need to heal, to soothe, to eliminate. We cannot just run through our spiritual path just like that. Another trap is heading towards God without awakening beforehand the divine child we carry within. Because in the moment we stop being a child, we die. Another trap is getting caught in the ephemeral fascinations while some paranormal powers are awakening in us, which leads to the awakening of an exacerbation of our spiritual vanity. And this is quite a big trap. And many, uh, many people are uh, getting caught into it and they stop uh, evolving because of this. Another trap that we might fall into is placing an amorous relationship above our aspiration to reveal our immortal self. In other words, not giving God anymore the first place in our life. Another trap is believing that the evil emotions which appear within are something interesting that are worth experimenting. Nothing, we should, we should never reject anything. We should just experiment because it's interesting. It's part of life. It's the web of life and so on. It's a demonic trap. Another trap is judging people but the, by the number of spiritual initiations, mantras and so on that they already received. So don't believe that if somebody has all the mantras and all the techniques, um, it means that, that the person has the highest level of spiritual evolution, because it doesn't mean that necessarily. Another demonic trap is getting fascinated by the, uh, sorry, getting trapped by the fascination and the control uh, you exert easily on other human beings when you become successful. This is another demonic trap. So starting manipulating, uh, using, misusing your power, making abuse of power. Another demonic trap is to make attempts to escape Earth or um, somehow getting away from here instead of making adequate efforts to awaken within the paradise so that you can live happily here and now on earth. Another demonic trap is not being able to notice that we don't have the same inner power when we get tired because we don't have the vitality. So we continue to work and uh, we get exhausted. So this is a demonic trap. We need to maintain balance. When we notice that we get tired, we don't have the same fuel, so to say, the same vitality, take a break, uh, rejuvenate, regenerate, and then you can work again. Another demonic trap is becoming extremist, not realizing that there is a wise measure in everything we do. And for example, working more than your, your physical body is able to, it's um, being an extremist. So here come some examples of destructive ideas based on demonic doubt that can pop up in our inferior minds. So we need to pay attention. We don't believe in them. For example, I doubt God exists. I doubt is necessary to love. I doubt I could ever attain spiritual enlightenment. I doubt I can transform following this spiritual path. I doubt that practicing yoga with perseverance can be of help to me. I doubt that it could be anybody perfect in this world. I doubt that it's good to forgive those who wronged you. I doubt that there are demons, and this is one of their favorite uh, tricks. I doubt that there are demons who influence people in a maleficent way. I doubt that I need to offer God the first place in my life. So here come some small, uh, advice, so small pieces of advice that you can apply easily in your life in order to triumph over demonic doubts and uh, also 
get out of spiritual tests in an extraordinarily good way. We need to remember that a relatively small group who is deeply transformed, intelligent, full of common sense, strong in good, fraternal, loving, full of good intentions, can actually help with the transformation of the entire humanity when they act in unison. So, for example, even if it might sound redundant, doing the meditations with the godly attributes that are uh, su supported by our spiritual guide every single day is being part of a deeply transformed, intelligent, full of common sense, strong in group, fraternal loving group that act in unison. Say a firm no to all and everything which has the tendency to lead you astray from the spiritual path you are on to. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds simple and I said already from the beginning, the suggestions that I come with, they might not seem to be spectacular, but actually they are. They are simple. It doesn't mean that they are not efficient. So every time you notice a tendency to deviate from what you have to do spiritually, say no, a firm no. Even if it's tough, I don't say it's easy, but it's necessary. So in order to do that, we need a constant self-awareness so that we don't make compromises. Paying attention to whatever we are having as thoughts in our mental structure, whatever emotions we have within, whatever states we experiment and experience, is necessary to have a constant self-awareness. And for example, one very simple question that we can have, especially when the state we experience is not exactly glorious, is... What type of resonance do I have right now? Do I want to continue to have it? So if we notice that it's not good, then we say a firm no, because we have free will, we can choose to exit it and enter into another state. So making compromises is not a solution because we start by making a small compromise now. And next time we will get a little bit uh, more comfortable or lazier and we will do a bigger compromise. And next time, just a little bit bigger. And uh, till the end, that will lead to a catastrophe for us from a spiritual point of view. Accumulating and assimilating the resonance with the godly attributes is a super easy method to apply practically every single day. And I am sure that you noticed, as I did, that our spiritual guide is speaking about the necessity for us to assimilate, accumulate the resonance with the godly attributes. No matter what topic he is speaking about, he always mentions the, the paramount importance of the godly attributes and the super necessity, the vital necessity for us to assimilate more and more of these divine, endless, free energies, godly energies in us. Because the more of these energies we have in us, the stronger spiritually we become, the more efficient we will be in just deflecting any demonic attempts to make us go astray. Something that um, works very well, and I have, I, I am applying it on a uh, on a constant basis, whenever I notice some <laughs> tendencies, some attempts to deviate me, is to even say, you don't have to say it out loud, but to say in your consciousness, I refuse totally and absolutely to listen to you. So when you notice that there are some demonic influences, they, demonic influences are all the time. It doesn't mean that we are a but bad person. It doesn't mean that we are not evolved enough. It doesn't mean, it just means we are on spiritual path. We have our role to transform spiritually. The demons have their role to stop us from transforming spiritually. So every time we notice these demonic influences, 
become aware that it doesn't come from you. It definitely doesn't come from your guardian angel. It doesn't come from any godly entities or divinities. It comes from demons. So realize that and then you say, I refuse totally and absolutely to listen to you. Why do you think this works? I said from the beginning, it works when you do that because you have free will. So by saying that, you use your free will and you tell, you let them know, I refuse to listen to you. I use my free will. You cannot go against my free will. So it's easy. And again, it might not seem, the. it doesn't have to be a super complicated technique to be able to deflect the demonic attempts. I like easy and efficient. So simple and efficient. When you do this, when you say, I refuse totally and absolutely to listen to you, they will not, they cannot continue because you affirmed, you use your free will. They cannot violate your free will. It's a divine law. Not even God will go against it. So the demons will not do that either. Then sometimes in some circumstances in life, especially if we are confronted with a spiritual crisis, and sometimes the crisis can be like a storm. Maybe you will feel that you don't even have the necessary strength to stand up against by simply saying, I refuse to listen to you. So the attacks, the demonic attacks can be so vigorous and so um, intense that the only thing you have left as a inner strength to do is to pray. So in those moments, I hope you'll never get confronted with that. But in case, it's good to good for you to know. In moments like that, you can simply uh, say it like a form of prayer. So you say, I, and then you say your name. All, all your names, for example, my name is Loredana Georgiana Danetz. So you can say, I, Loredana Georgiana Danetz, belong entirely and in all eternity to God the Father. And you simply repeat this over and over again until you start accumulating in you this resonance that you belong entirely and in all eternity to God. So by getting this energy more and more in, inside of you, in your inner universe, the attacks coming from demons will not will not be able anymore to penetrate through this divine shield that you just created by saying this simple prayer. So in case, but I sincerely hope that you will never be in such a situation that you feel you don't have any more power left in you, then you can use this simple prayer, which you repeat over and over again. And if it helps, you can even say it out loud until you will notice that this vicious demonic attacks diminishes. And after a while, they, they will go away from you because they you just affirmed, expressed your free will to belong entirely and in all eternity to God. Spiritual invocation of our guardian angel is also of help. So again, I enjoy and I like, I appreciate simple but efficient. So you don't have to do a technique in 20 steps in order to triumph over spiritual tests and uh, trials. Simple but efficient works very well. So invoking our guardian angel and you don't, we don't have to be confronted with demonic attacks. We don't have to be in the middle of a spiritual test. Invoking our guardian angel is like spending time with the best friend ever we will have. So it's good for us no matter if we are if happy, not tested, everything is super beautiful and magnificent, or we are in the middle of a life crisis. Sincere prayer is also helping a lot. I gave you one example, but of course you can also come up with a prayer of your choice. Also, when you feel that the demonic energies are uh, uh, trying to lurk inside of you and get into you, 
it's absolutely necessary to stop whatever you are doing. Of course, if it is possible to stop whatever you are doing, uh, I'm not uh, talking now to do something which is dangerous or absurd, but if you can stop what you are doing, stop and do 10 self blessings in a row. By doing that, you accumulate the godly energy of godly blessing, which is exercising. It's simply driving out of you these uh, demonic entities. They, they cannot stand godly energies. So it is necessary to do 10 self blessings in a row, not two now, three, two hours later and five in the evening. You have to do all of them in a row. Fasting on Sundays is another simple example of what we can do in order to enhance our inner resonance with godly divine energies. Uh, you know that each week of the day is in resonance with the subtle astral sphere of force of a planet or the moon and the sun, Monday and Sunday. So Sundays is in subtle resonance with the astral sphere of the sun which is the spiritual, from a spiritual point of view, in the spiritual tradition, it is considered to be the center, the spiritual center of our galaxy. So we can choose if we want to do fasting when we drink only water on Sundays. Another aspect that we can do is consecrate our being and life to God. Or we can apply what our spiritual guide uh, suggested, that we consecrate every single day our Supreme Self to God. So we can consecrate our being, our life to God. We can do three consecrations of our Atman, of our Divine Self to God. So in this manner, we make sure that we strengthen our connection to the godly aspects and our connection to God. And this is also uh, a small gesture in which we show that we put God in the first place in our life. So these were the aspects that I wanted to present to you. And now I will be very happy to answer to any of your questions. There is a uh, question and answer uh, menu, but there is also the chat. So no matter which of you choose to use, please do so that we can also have a dialogue. I see here that Paula raised her hand. So Paula, if you want to ask, please write your question in the chat or in the question and answer menu. So that we can have a little bit of a dialogue. There is Maxim who asks, can demons trigger or aggravate the symptoms of a sickness? Definitely. They, they have, you can imagine, they, they have a sick pleasure in uh, doing anything damaging against us. So they can trigger a sickness and they can also aggravate the symptoms of a sickness. Yes, they do that. And uh, sometimes, uh, for example, when you don't know the cause, the doctors cannot find the cause, but you still have some health issues. Uh, it's because of demonic entities um, vitiating your energies, your etherical and astral body, which in turn affects the physical body. So the, the answer is yes. So Maxim says, this is exactly my situation. So in this situation, uh, if you allow me to come with a suggestion, do 10 blessings for you every day. And then make sure that uh, 
you apply something practically to shield yourself from this um, from these attempts to worse your health. I am sure that you know very well what to what to do, but this with the ten blessings per day, it's uh, very helpful. Anyone else wants to? You're very welcome. Toppy asks why our good God would allow the demons' existence. Thank you for answering. I am not very sure that I can answer this question to your satisfaction, but God ex uh, allows the existence of demons. It is, it is a mystery for us. It allows the existence of demons because God is the one who created everything, including the free will. So in the beginnings, there were only angels, and then among them, some of the angels, using their free will in a super wrong way, um, chose to go against God. So this is the manner in which the demons start existing. But they also have a role in our existence. Their role is to test us. So the more of the spiritual godly energy you have in you, the less they would be able to influence you. So this is what I know personally. I am not sure that this answer is to your satisfaction, but demons exist because God allows free will. So the angel, some angels chose to go against God and therefore they fall. They became demons. And they are there also with this role to test us, to make sure that we get stronger and to make sure uh, that we choose our free will. We use our free will, sorry. We use our free will to choose. So we can choose God, or we can choose the anti-divine aspects. The, nothing is uh, in existence to destroy us. So the demons are not existing to destroy us. They exist to test us. So from a certain point of view, with a little bit of transfiguration, we can consider them to be, from a certain point of view, our teachers. They come with the tests and then we pass the test or not. When we pass the test, we will uh, have a three a threefold uh, progress in our transformation. When we fall a test, we will have a threefold regression in our spiritual evolution. So this is uh, my answer. Uh, this is not the ultimate truth, but this is what I can answer right now to you. Anyone else who wants to ask, or if you want to uh, share with us a situation in which you were tested and you did something practically and simply managed to pass the test extraordinarily well. That can also be inspiring for uh, those participating in the webinar when we shared So it's another question uh, from the same person. How is the demon manifested in the tantric tradition? I am not very sure, but my intuition will say that uh, the demons manifest in the tantric tradition by uh, also by testing people uh, using the sexual energy instead of the pure erotic energy. This will be my first intuitive uh, answer to you. So misusing this life force, which is our uh, sexual potential, so that instead of uh, transforming and getting closer to God, we become trapped in the physical pleasures and we start misusing this uh, energy 
So instead of using the pure erotic energy to come closer to God, we just uh, fall into the sexual uh, desires which is taking, which are taking us away from God. I am sure that there are also other um, stratagems that they use, but this, I believe, it's. Uh, they are favorite on the in the tantric tradition. You're very welcome. So another question here from um, Maxim. He says like this, I have noticed that when I choose to make some extra efforts and start to have some good results, suddenly there comes again problems with my sickness. Does this, does this mean that the demons also put more energy in, in their efforts to deviate me? Because this happens usually very surprisingly when everything was going to a good direction, then there is no apparent reason for the bad situation. Definitely. So they, they are around us to stop us from evolving, to stop us from getting results, mm -hmm. to stop us from reaching the ultimate truth, from, uh, simply to stop us from uh, discovering who we really are. So as you describe it here in the in the chat yes definitely they put more energy because their mission in their life is to stop you from achieving results from deepening the results from continuing with them and especially when there are no apparent reasons for that situation yes you can be sure that uh, they had the their tails so to say into it You're very welcome. Yes. Any other questions or if you want to share some situation that you are not sure if it is related to our topic? From a topic, it sounds like this. I experienced recently after very uplifted spiritual state that I could fall very fast after into sorrow and pain and vulnerability. Are these related to demons force? Uh, yes. So to make it a little bit simplistic, we can resonate a little bit like that whenever we feel something which is uplifting making us happy feel harmonious uh, ha having beautiful states it is because we have the help of angels and divine entities whenever we have the opposite of these states sorrow pain vulnerability anger whatever states which are not harmonious, which are not beneficial or uplifting, they are something to do with demonic energies and entities. So therefore, for example, I was uh, mentioning a little bit earlier about motivation. Uh, for me, also something which is motivating me to be very firm and not allow myself to fall into compromises, it to, is to realize that this type of tendency tendencies are inspired by angels these type of tendencies tendencies are inspired by demons i refuse totally and categorically to listen to those so because i want to spend my time and i want to spend my life with god and angels i don't want to spend my time and my life with demons definitely even if they are around because they have their role in our life, 
I, I refuse to fall into their trap. It doesn't mean, so please don't misunderstand me, it doesn't mean that I am perfect and I am free of mistakes. And sometimes I notice that uh, it already it already went. So I was not aware enough or I was not paying enough attention. But it motivates me a lot to realize that angels, demons, which ones do I want to spend my life with? Definitely angels. Categorically, no demons. <laughs> uh, Miha is asking me, how was your biggest spiritual, what was your biggest spiritual test until now? How did you realize that it is a test and how you dealt with it? Um, it is something which is very personal. So uh, I choose not to give you all the details. It was um, a super extraordinarily intense state of um, the opposite of not feeling good but extremely intense with super strange thoughts. And I realized that those thoughts are not mine. So basically the thoughts were about that life is not worth living or something like that. Again, it is something which is private. So I choose not to go into details, but the direction was that. So I realized that these thoughts don't belong to me, but the intensity of the demonic attacks was so, so huge that I simply didn't have enough energy physically to sit. I need to lie down. And the only thing I could do is to, do, to say that prayer. I, Loredana, Georgia, the Nets, belong in all eternity entirely to God. And I was repeating that over and over and over again until I summoned a little bit of physical energy so that I could practice a little bit of yoga so I can go, go out and keep the yoga classes. So um, it was very obvious that it was a test because the state was, you know, like having... Uh, a huge weight on you, doing the best to crush you from all points of view, from physical point of view, from an emotional point of view, from a mental point of view. You know, like feeling if I if if I continue if it continues like this, I will lose my mind. I will lose my life. I will lose myself. So uh, that was the biggest one, uh, and my strategy or my uh, practical. Um, path, my, the practical way I dealt with it is to hang myself on to God, to pray to God so that I can summon up a little bit of energy and summon, increase the energy until I was, uh, until I, I passed the test. So, Paula says, thank you so much for your work. It's very inspiring and beautiful. Thank you, Paula, for uh, making it possible for me to share with it, because otherwise I will just have it for myself. And that is not uh, that is not the point. Emmanuel also says very inspiring indeed. I feel gratitude as well. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for your kind feedback. If there are no more questions and if no one else wants to share, then I will stop here. I thank you so much for... Uh, sorry, Maxim. Aha, uh -huh. you were asking if we can watch the recording somewhere um, about the blessings. So I will have the recording of the entire webinar uh, soon on the YouTube channel of Nata Yoga Kalskruna. So there you will have the entire recording with everything. 
And Manuel says, I feel inspired to do the 10 self blessings. I'm very happy to hear that. And I know from my own experience that it works like a charm every single time. So when you do the 10 blessings, do one bless, so every blessing for a minimum, a minimum of one minute. But if you have, when you have the time, you can do every single blessing for um, three minutes. So it's all in all, it gets half an hour. There is here another, uh, just a second. So I answer to another one. So Maxim says like this, I have noticed that when I choose to make some extra efforts and start to have some good results, but I, I read it, I uh, answered to it already. <laughs> so I'm sorry that I missed that one maxim there are uh, coming one after another and if they are more at the same time they just disappear there so if you can copy it and put it again of course i will answer it eugen says thank you georgiana god bless you god bless us all dear eugen Uh, Maxim says, can demons prevent us from feeling the effects of blessings? Demons can prevent us from feeling everything which is beneficial to a certain degree. So perseverance. They can prevent you in the beginning to feel the effects of the blessings. Yes. But because you are perseverant and you do them every single day, you start accumulating more and more of the godly bless energy of blessing. So the more of it you accumulate in you, the more you will start feeling it. So after a while, they will not be able anymore to stop you from that. Or at least maybe some days when you are tired or you had not a magnificent day, it was a bad day, you can feel less. So the answer is yes, they can prevent you from feeling the effects. And they will do that, as you put it here in the chat, especially when you start doing extra efforts in your spiritual practice, because they get alarmed. Ah, Maxine is here. He will, he, will, he will evolve too much. Let's stop him. So they bring their friends, so to say, to stop you from doing that. But remember, you have your guardian angel, and your guardian angel can bring his friends. And the evil, no matter how uh, desperate it gets to preventing you from everything, it can never, ever, ever win against the good. So this is something that you need to remind yourself, especially when the situation is tough. The evil can never, ever, ever, ever win against the divine good. So the more divine good we accumulate in us through yoga, no matter which techniques, because they are all placing us into resonance with the godly energies, the stronger we get. So even when we are under attacks, and for example, I was asked which was the toughest test, that one in which I felt that either I will go crazy or I will die. And the intensity when I was talking about it with a friend, she was looking at me a little bit scared and said, Georgiana, I'm happy it happened to you because if that would happen to me, I would have killed myself. So even when the intensity is like that, that you feel you will die, no, the evil can never, ever, ever win against the divine good. Choose the divine good. Of course, they will try whatever to stop you, to discourage you, to lead you astray, to so they, and especially in this period of time, on this planet, they are desperate. This is why it's also happening, what, what is happening outside. To a certain degree, because too many people don't care anymore about the divine good, but also because it's also an opportunity for all of us we are pushed to our limits 
we need to choose. Now, do we want the divine good or do we want to be just uh, controlled, manipulated and pushed around? So um, don't, don't accept it. Use your free will. Choose God. They cannot win ever. No matter how desperate they are, no matter what they do, they they so we we will always win over the evil because the good is infinite. The evil is just a small part in the entire manifestation with the role to test us. Um, Aliza, if it's uh, pronounced like that, if I pronounce it uh, wrong, I apologize, says, thank you for this inspiring webinar. And Maxim says, thank you so much. This has been a wonderful webinar and extremely helpful in my, helpful in my current situation. I'm very happy to hear that, Maxim. Uh, Eugen says, demands are often invisible to most of us, fortunately. Yes, because they're hideous. How can we distinguish their mixture in our lives, considering that very often their presence is very discreet, not out of politeness? <laughs> I like your humor. They are also quite subtle. I mean, very subtle situations. What's your detector? What is your advice for us? Uh, my detector is my heart. So when I feel in my heart something is not right, that's my detector. Then I know that there are some tales in the situation. And uh, also, so I am not by far an exemplary uh, yogi practitioner, by far. I'm, I consider myself to be a mediocre one. But still, I have been practicing yoga for 33 years. So that cleansed me a little bit, charged me a little bit with divine energies. I have, I have some, some spiritual strength to a certain degree uh, and also the necessary knowledge so that I can discern when the energies there are not, are not all right. So the, my advice for you, because you asked for it, is check with your heart. Check always with your heart and your common sense. When you have the combination of your heart and common sense, you will detect that something is not right there. Um, Paula is asking, do you think there can be such a thing as too much practice? For example, four or five hours, or is a, again a trap? Dear Paola, no, there cannot be too much practice. Uh, it becomes a trap. So it's not about the amount of hours. I had a period of time, and the period of time meant a couple of years when I was practicing at least eight hours per day. I had moments or days when I was practicing 16 hours per day. So the trap is not that you practice four or five hours. You can practice eight hours. You can practice 16 and you'll feel great. The trap is when there is an egotic, there is a selfish reason. You want, I don't know, you want to achieve paranormal powers or you are very stubborn with it. So instead of doing it from a place of harmony, generosity, aspiration, love for God, um, longing for God, you do it for the wrong reason. That's a trap. But there is not a trap that you practice four or five hours per day. Definitely, that's not the trap. The trap is how you practice, not how much you practice. Miha says... As we grow spiritually, the tests are more subtle. If we are not able to realize that you are tested, are you writing to the spiritual guides or you consult a friend for it or you just rely on your heart? 
so it is true that uh, the more we grow spiritually, the tests get more subtle. Uh, I rely on my heart always. And uh, thanks God for the moment, I have not been going through uh, traps or tests that I cannot spot. So um, otherwise, always I am re uh, relating on, relying on and uh, asking for the advice of uh, our spiritual guide. But because you uh, ask, put, ask the question like that, so I rely on my spiritual heart and on my self-awareness. So I am keeping myself under the microscope of my consciousness all the time so that I can notice. Uh, and uh, because there were no major tests uh, that I couldn't uh, distinguish for myself, I didn't... Uh, wrote i didn't write to our spiritual guide otherwise i always ask him so he is my spiritual guide of course he is guiding me and i rely on it and sometimes when i'm not short when the tests are small and i'm not very sure i have my best friend that i speak with so This um, this is how I do it. Small tests, I rely on my heart and my self-awareness. Uh, a little bit bigger tests, friends. And when there are major tests, without a doubt, without uh, any hesitation, our spiritual guide, definitely. You are very welcome, Michal. All right. Any other questions? Good. Then thank you so much for taking your time to spend it listening to me being together i hope that this uh, webinar with the aspects that i presented is helpful to you and i wish you that you will pass with great success or all the spiritual tests that you are confronted with and just as a final idea we should never ask not to get tested because this is how we grow we should ask that we are um, aware enough so that we pass them i wish you a wonderful saturday and a great weekend and thank you so much for enabling me to share with you these aspects i am very happy uh, that you make it possible for me to share with you have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.